Yep, a little bit more right. Yep, that's it. Touch a left, yep. Holy. On today's episode, yeah. we're taking you oh. on a four-wheel drive 24-7 adventure that's just a little different. Yeah, no, it's pretty, pretty comfortable. As Australians, we've faced many of our states being locked away from each other during the COVID-19 pandemic. And Sean O and I suddenly have found ourselves living not just on opposite sides of the country, but on opposite sides of hard, closed borders. But mates who wheel together, stick together. And so while we can't travel together in person, we're gonna do some socially distanced wheeling together, each exploring our own side of this big old country. And to make this interesting, we've got a bet going. We're gonna see who can have more fun on their trip. With Sean opting for wheeling the tough tracks on tap at Coffs Harbour, while I punt north to the remote Murchison coast in search of the best touring this country has on offer. And this, of course, is where you come in. We want you to watch this adventure and tell us who you reckon has the better weekend away. Tough tracks or touring? Oh. Who wins it? I guess you're going to have to watch to find out. Well, I reckon you can't have a tough weekend we had a couple of tough rigs and um, they don't get much tougher than Kaido's Hilux and of course Jocko's Sast Hilux. So we'll catch in with the boys and um, see if they're ready for an epic weekend of tough tracks. Gotta say mate, that Hilux of yours is certainly looking the goods mate. Are you ready for a tough weekend away? Yeah mate, plenty of recovery gear for the bloke behind me so yeah, we're ready to go. Yeah, you'll need it mate, you'll need it. Jocko, you got a copy mate. Mate, I gotcha and I'm stoked to be uh, back in cost for one. Mate, I can't wait to show you a couple of tracks that um, I don't think you've even done before, mate. You'll be, um, oh, you'll be popping when you see them. Stop it, bring it on. And uh, no Graham this time, which uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing just yet. I'm, I'm uh, pretty excited. Well, mate, something tells me um, we're probably gonna have even more fun, I reckon. Well, Sean, I've got to admit, mate, a tough weekend with you and the boys up at Coffs Harbour does sound appealing, but, mate, there's no way you're gonna have more fun than me, you see? I'm heading up to the Midwest coast of Western Australia and I'm gonna be taking in some of the most stunning touring country you will find anywhere in Australia, hands down. And Sean, when you see the waters up here and the fishing potential, you're gonna be green with envy, mate. For now, I've got one mission and that mission is to prove once and for all, you know it, that West really is best. <laughs> While Graham is off pretending like he knows how to fish, we're heading into the forest around Coffs in search for our first track. Coffs is renowned for its hardcore tracks, so we're knocking a fair bit of air out of the tyres this morning as we get ready for some intense low range action. For this trip, I'm behind the wheel of Sooty the 80, which is sporting a couple of choice new mods. And of course, I'm being followed by two pretty different but very capable Hiluxes. First off is this neat little number wheeled by Kaido, an IFS manual tricked out with a bunch of camping mods from Drifter's extensive range, including a brand new rooftop tent design that Kaido reckons we're absolutely gonna love. He's also running a Mitz alloy dog box and some performance mods that should make this rig an absolute weapon. Jockey's stoked to be back behind the wheel of his pride and joy, an insane rock crawling beast purposely built to take on some of the toughest tracks around. And with that in mind, we're starting the trip with Jeep Track, and the first challenge is just to get into it, with this slippery entry between us and the start of the track. This very first little section drop off, check this out, this is like the Coffs Harbour equivalent of gunshot. Straight down, holy heck. Slippery. <laughs> That's a good start of the day. Yeah, right. It's pretty but, slippery, mate. Yeah. It's gonna move these rocks. Yeah. Yep. Good way to clear the cobwebs out. Wow. That's so slippery, eh? They're pretty. Maybe try coming up there. Yeah, I'm gonna go up this side. Yep, the trick is definitely to avoid getting into those ruts. You can try to turn later if you can, there's a fair bit of room here. But even then, geez, it's taking some effort. Come left hand down. Just try to turn later. Ah. I 
Tesla car. Wowzers. That's slippery. That's the only way to do it though. Just fall on those ruts. Zero chance. This section doesn't have a lot of sun on it. It's just that slippery clay. So I think it's one of those times where no matter what you do, if you stay in the ruts, you're probably not going to go anywhere. But what do you reckon? Guido's no doubt got his serious face on, and I reckon whatever line he picks, he's absolutely going to send it. Yeah, slippery. It's starting to get already. Yeah. Let's take it. We just slipped out of that rut a little bit, a bit of right hand down and back. That's a go. That's a Easy. Step. Nailed it. Loves it. All right, mate, what are you going to do? Um, well, you guys <laughs> both have power, but judging by yeah. what Kylo just did. Also, right. skill and great looks. Yeah, none of which I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah Jocko, when you're ready, mate. Um, Kylo says you need more KZ in that vehicle, too, by the way. More KZ or more KW? What's the motor in yours? Oh, KD. One KD. One KD. I already stuffed up the Hilux jokes already, mate. It tells you. I don't know a stack about Hiluxes. See how we go, Luxie. I have about four kilowatts on a downhill stretch with the tailwind, so hopefully I won't need power coming up this section, but we'll just take it nice and steady. Jock might not have all the power in the world, but he's got reduction gears and 35s. Reduction gears really goes to prove that you don't need heaps of power oh, off-road. Yeah. It's about getting the power you've got down to those tyres. Loves it. Loves it. Oh, it's good to be back. Come on, Jocko. Well done, mate. Oh, that felt good. With that slippery introduction out of the way, ahead of us is a start of Jeep Track proper. This one is a mess of steep angles, rock steps, ruts, and really scary angles. In other words, a typical Coffs Harbour track. We go rock step after rock step. This is such a cool little track. Kaido and I are soon getting stuck into the lower section of the climb, and so far, we're taking everything in our stride. Woo! But back at the bottom of the hill, Jocko is not doing so well. <laughs> Good one, Jocko. Nice drive, mate. Good drive. Is my front left tyre spinning? No, none of the tyres are spinning, mate. Yeah, you got your lockers on, mate. We, we can't help you any more than that. That's a good start, Jocko. Good start, mate. Hey, Jocko. I reckon um, Graham might even have a spare seat with him, mate, if you want to join him for maybe the next weekend away. Probably a good idea after that performance. That's a good start. OK, now that Jock's figured out how a four-wheel drive works, he's also into the climb. And not surprisingly, the Luxie just monsters up. So easy, mate. Now, while the boys are taking their time just getting up one hill, I'm eating up the miles, heading to one of my favourite places. I've got around 700 kilometres to cover to get me up into the Murchison Coast. This is a part of the country that many West Australians barrel past on their way north to more famous locations like Exmouth or Coral Bay. But that really is their loss, because not only is this stretch of coast absolutely stunning, it offers so much for the touring four-wheel driver. The Murchison Coast really is a pristine wilderness with perfect campsites, calm waters and sunsets all around. I've set myself three goals for this trip. Firstly, I want to catch a fish and have it for dinner to make Sean o jealous. Secondly, I've got a campsite in mind where I hope to be able to see a sunset and a sunrise over the ocean. And thirdly, I want to put it to bed once and for all that West really is best. Now, whilst we all know tough tracks are super fun, it's four-wheel drive touring that allows us to see the best parts of Australia. Now, I'm actually up here for the next month, touring my way through the Murchison and then across to Dirk Hartog Island, filming the whole lot for this very channel. We've taken the D-Max all over Australia on some of the country's toughest tracks, but I am so stoked to be able to do some epic touring in a vehicle that is absolutely perfectly designed for this sort of four-wheel driving. The D-Max and I are in our absolute element over here, tackling big distances and remote locations. This is what this vehicle was set up to do. And my goodness, doesn't it do it well? For now though, my first mission is to tick off goal number one. Park up and catch a fish for dinner. How good is this? 
things are getting a little steeper as you head further up Jeep track and a lot more technical. Correct tyre placement is everything on these types of tracks and getting it wrong can be pretty scary. Chuck the front locker on here. I've got to say, I'm absolutely loving my Goodyear Wranglers on these shaley rocky tracks. They might be mud terrains, but they work a treat in conditions just like this. And right now, they're in their element. Beautiful. There we go. Up we go. Up we go. Cool. One of the things I've noticed about the Goodyear Wrangler is just how much traction they have on the rocks. When you let them Ooh. down to around 18 PSI, they grip like anything. Kaido is also running a set of Goodyears, and likewise, nice his Luxie is just nice. loving the Nailed steep it. terrain. Very nice. Oh, very nice. Holy. Well done, mate. Very good drive. Kaido might be making it look easy, but don't be fooled. This is an A-grade track with some big obstacles on a steep, steep slope. Jock decided he wants to make this track even harder by taking a line that most sane people wouldn't even think existed. That thing crawl. How slow can it go? This is the most amazing machine, that thing. Yeah, yeah. That's it, that's it, that is it. Phew! That is insane! What a rig! How good's that? Woohoohoo! Luxie's back, baby! That is insane! That is insane. I've got nothing else to say. He just saw the line that we took, Kaido, and went, you know what? I need to challenge you in my life. I think I sat here with my finger on the... Um, you do that. Whenever something's go, like wild, you just go... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't say anything. No words come out. This is one big rut, and it leads directly into a rock step. Get this one wrong, and it's goodbye panels. And Jocko, mate, that's not helping. Let's give this a go, eh? Right, Let's give this a go. Good. I'll get you to spot me. Kaido, do you want to spot him? Oh, that's why. a slippery rut. There's no traction. All of these rocks like this, they're just like ball bearings, trying to drive across ball bearings. Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> look at that. Who needs mates when you've got a Jocko around? <laughs> Righto, let's give it a go. Yeah. Now, just having a look at that challenge. Seems to have grown a little bit over the last 12 months. The rut at the start has got me a bit worried because you fall out of that rut, you're going to do some panel damage. I don't want to do that. I've got new flares on the truck at the moment. Just trying to keep them looking new for a little while. Yeah, we've got Jock spotting, so it gives me a little bit of confidence. Oh, it's a big rut. Just a little bit, yep. Yep, a little bit more right, yep, that's it. Touch a left, touch a left, yep. You know, I really am not liking where this is going. Stop. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, no, it's pretty, pretty comfortable. Might, might have to wish that one, mate. You're on a big angle, hey. Big angle? I just kept going. Just yeah. kept going. It just picked up like you wouldn't believe. I wonder what Graham is doing in this situation. He's probably doing something quite similar. My heart rate is holy heck. <laughs> well, there you go. That's what you call a good size flatty. Gonna whip a couple of fillets off that bad boy. Shino, hope you're having a good time, buddy. <laughs> I know I am. Fun, well, it's probably not the first word that comes to mind at the moment, mate. There is definitely some clenching going on. Come and touch your right hand down and just edge forward ever so slightly. It'll probably start to drop, but just do it just a bit. I just wanna see how she behaves. Because if not, we'll just go for a winch. No, it's going to get worse. As soon as, I, as soon as that clutch starts to grab, yeah, it just wants to lift a just bit more. Just lift up a little bit, yeah. Not just, it might come down, but it might not. Yeah, I think getting on the winch is the best call here. So Jock and Kaido jump into getting Sooty all hooked up. I'm not going to lie, I'm really looking forward not being on this angle. At first, this winch position seems to be working, and thankfully, the front is starting to come down. But as I start to creep forward, we go back to square one. A little bit more right. A little bit more right. Yep. How's that feeling in there? Every time I let the winch out, it gets higher. Woohoo! It's really on the knife edge right now. Might have to reset that winch now. Yep, time for a reposition. 
To think I could be standing on a beach right now fishing. <laughs> Tell you what, I wouldn't have it any other way. <sighs> on the plus side, I'm now in the rut, so I can't exactly fall any further. And soon, I've winched past the worst of it and can take on the rock step. Touch your left hand down. All right, Sooty, don't let me down. Here we go. Please come forward just a little bit of left and try and bump up the arse. Oh, this is sooty. It's not even good sort, that's bad no, sort. Bad sort. Sooty was sitting on its side for quite a while, so that probably explains why it's blowing a lot of extra smoke. I've got no idea why some of the guys name this vehicle Sooty. It beats me. Oh, almost. Oh. almost. Maybe, Sean, if you come back a little bit more and try and bring your, like, come back and give it another go and get your right tyre or bring the whole car over to this bank a little bit more. Yep. All right, yep. third time's a charm. Right boot down. Yes, we go. Yep. That's it, that's it. Yeah. Yoo-hoo! There we go! <laughs> yeah! Ah, that feels good. Not out yet. Celebrated too early. Ah, yes. Toyota brakes. How good are they? That's the left. Yep. That's him. I think now's the time to celebrate. Yes! <laughs> so excited to drive that. So stoked. Oh, All yeah. right, sort of rattled me a little bit, that one. Big tracks at Coffs Harbour. That was a committing drive. He did that really well. Big and heavy, and just where that's where some lower gearing ought to come into play really nicely because he could position the car a bit better, but I reckon he absolutely nailed that. It's a hard drive. We've already seen Jock take some wild lines, and he's got an equally committing one in mind here. Yeah, coming up, mate. All right, I'm gonna try to stay in the rut this time, but I don't know if I'm gonna eat my word. We'll find out. Let's give this a go, eh? Could you have a go at that angle, would you? There shouldn't be a panel left straight on that left side of Jocko's vehicle, but somehow, the Lux is fitting perfectly into a car swallowing rut and staying off the bank. This feels so wild. I'm holding on. What an angle. It was on the craziest angle, but I just loved it. That's a crazy drive, Jocko. That's it, he's setting up perfectly for this line. That's it. Look at that. Yep, that was an impressive drive, Jocko. Loves it. Although, I'll have to mark you down for once again trying to dent your door panel. Low centre of gravity, nice big wide track in it, super lightweight, twin lockers, and a custom suspension setup that allows it to flex like a sick giraffe. That's what you need around here. Either way, the Jeep track was a great way to start off a tough East Coast weekender. Well, boys, I've got to say, that was a very entertaining day on the tracks. Absolute cracker. I had a ball. Stoked to finally be uh, getting the opportunity to drive Jeep track. Yeah, it's a good track. What do you think, Kaido? You like it, mate? You'll be back? Yeah, that was awesome. I love the technical stuff, eh? It was so good. How yeah, good is this place? Coffs Harbour. I mean, if you want to come down here and drive some tough tracks, well, this is the place to do it. They don't get much harder than the ones out at Coffs Harbour. There's something for everyone, though. You don't have to go and drive insane tracks, but there's a lot of those if you like that sort of stuff. You've got so many little state forests, national parks, right on the mountains of Coffs Harbour. There's great camping north and south, heaps of U camps chucked in, that's where we'll probably head tonight. It's just one of those places you have to go. The Coffs Coast is one of the most beautiful coastlines anywhere in Australia. In fact, I want to say it's probably better than half the WA coastline, and um, I reckon Graham probably agrees. <laughs> As if he does. Talk it up, Shorno. I told you I was going to show you a stunning beach camp, and would you look at that? Now, not only is this a spectacular location, but it's got one very special attribute. It has both a sunset and a sunrise over the ocean. How good is that? If this doesn't get you stoked for touring this country, nothing will.
You know what? Our camp for the night isn't too shabby either, as we check out a local U camp at the back of the state forest. Well, oh, boys, I reckon this is a little bad spot to roll some campus out. What do you reckon? How good is this grassy campsite? Sign me up. Just time to crack a beer, I reckon. Just get camp set up, get a fire going up, and um, maybe even cook something. Little special treat for the boys. Hope they've got strong stomachs. <laughs> And just like that, at either end of the country, camp setup is getting started. And Kaido wastes no time in getting that trick new rooftop tent open and ready to go. Boy, that doesn't take long, mate. Holy heck, mate. You're not telling me you're set up already. Yeah, she's all good to go, mate. You'd hardly know I was on there today. That was literally 30 seconds. I haven't even got like, the swag out of the four-wheel drive yet, mate. You're already set up. Yeah, she pops up real quick. Mate, that is awesome. And I didn't realise it had that much headroom as well. Yeah, yeah. When you got the second fold out, nice even headroom inside. So, yeah, it's really, really nice. Now, it's obviously quite a low profile. I've been looking at it today. It did not affect the vehicle and the tracks one little bit. It must be quite lightweight, is it? Yeah, it comes in about 59 kilos. So 59 kilos. Yep. That's incredible, mate. And super quick to put up. That's what I like about hard shell rooftop tents. Four clips on the outside, pop straight up. You got the second piece come out and yeah, you're all good to go, ready what, to be. What I like about that one as well, I noticed that the, the hard shell is not part of the tent. So I imagine it breathes quite nicely. Yeah, so you got a nice air gap between the tent and the hard shell itself. Uh, which gives you breathability, stops the condensation, and you got the fly on top, which is really nice. Holy heck, mate. Look, just have another look at this because that could be my future right there. I'm, what are you thinking? I've always wanted a hard shell rooftop tent, and um, I've been looking at one. I just haven't found the right one. I wanted a lightweight one, yeah. and mate, this one just ticks all the boxes. I'm thinking the Dirty 30 might get one of these, mate, because- If you got the room for it, they're awesome. Oh, mate, I just like how fast you set up. Like, you're, you're ready to have a beer. I've still got to set my- Oh, your shout, mate. You're ready shout. to go. Well, it might have taken me a tad more than 30 seconds, but I've got my own trick little camp set up. Have a look at the view out the front, will you? And more importantly, I've beaten the boys to a first beer. <laughs> Good things shouldn't be rushed, mate. And aside from Jocko, there's some neat camp kit popping up at our end as well. Jack, I reckon. Yep, great minds think alike, Shono. I tell you what, while I'm missing out on some of the tough stuff at Coffs, I'm absolutely loving the chance to do some real touring in the D-Max. Sunset to myself, a cold brewski, you boys are really missing out. But I tell you, if you want to make it to remote places like this, you've got to be prepared. You know, one thing I am super pedantic about is having storage space when it comes to prepping meals in camp. The Mitz Alloy Canopy nails it with just a small bit of help from the Clearview drop down tray down there. Let me talk you through it. So tonight we're having, well I was going to have steak tonight, but why would you have bloody steak when you've got big fat fresh flathead fillers that you can have instead. So that's going to be done. Some, uh, some flour, salt and pepper over there on the barbecue. Um, down here we're going to have some broccoli, some corn, some potatoes. They're just waiting down there to be prepped so they're out of the way. Plenty of storage up here. I've got my speaker ready for a little bit of country and western a bit later on. But this over here is what I really like. The trundle tray that comes out the back. The trundle tray's got a lid on it. And it's on that lid that I'm doing all my charging ready for tomorrow. It's out of the way. I don't need to worry about it. It's not going to get in the way of my cooking. You can never have too much storage space. And don't forget, one of the most important things. You always need somewhere to put your brewski. Uh, boys, I hope you're eating as well as me tonight. Don't worry folks, I've got some big plans, but first I'm going to take a load off and enjoy a couple of cold ones by the fire. We've had some big adventures today and I reckon it's about time to check in with our westernmost camper. Well, how good's this fellas? Join a fire, Coffs Harbour? Cracker of a day. And even better, <laughs> we've got yeah, a hairy little mate on the line. Mate, Hi, mate. big cheers hey, eh? Hey boys! <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> We're an absolute hoot down here, mate, and um, looks like you are too. Not a bad little spot, mate. Mate, a good spot. Are you kidding me? Sun setting over there to the west. I've got an entire beach to myself here. Fish are jumping out the front. I have got flathead for dinner. Mate, if you don't think this is a good spot, then I tell you what, you've got to check your pulse. What do you got planned for this evening? Well, mate, I'm cooking a recipe for the ages. Now, this is... This is one I've been practicing on and... I'm know, excited. Graham's gonna, not here, you're going to treat us. I'm going to pick out all the tricks yep. and make one of the best meals ever because um, 
Bone's not here. I think I think should treat you boys. <laughs> yes. yes, good mate. All right, I'm gonna go start stretching, mate, and um, start making a mess. Righto, sounds good. I tell you what, I'll keep you online. We'll see how you go. <laughs> Cheers, boys. All right, it's that time of day, and I'm very very excited about this one because I'm gonna cook up a red hot meal. Coffs Harbour is renowned for tough tracks, but this meal is not so tough. It's a great one if you've got fish. If you don't have fish, you can um, use chicken, whatever you want, really. But um, in this case, I'm going to be using uh, a little bit of fish that we caught recently, actually. You really should learn this one, because even if you catch a little bit of fish, like, like your docker, you can't fish. You can't I cannot a, fish. You can't fish to save yep. yourself. You might get one fish, not enough to go around for the whole family. Well, this is a meal that'll sort of space that out. What are you making, mate? A bit of... It's, it's a green curry. Ooh, I caught a flathead once. I always say you look like the fish you catch, mate. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That, but you do look like a fathead. Look at you. <laughs> I'm going to go for about two tablespoons of... Well, that's, that's more than a tablespoon. There's no doubt about it. What's that? Just curry this paste. Is, this is green curry paste. I haven't even put the heat on yet. This is I'm just oh, yeah. stirring that right in. You can oh, cut a this? bit of coriander, mate. This is a bit of hit and miss, this stuff. Some people love it. People that don't like coriander, weak. Yeah, Graham <laughs> hates it. Graham <laughs> hates coriander. There you go. So basically what we're getting here is the paste and the coconut cream. They're infused together, mate. Infused? Yeah, that's look, a I'll try word. and slow it down for that's you. That's a like, big word. The non-chef people out there. So I'm giving it a fair bit of heat. What I want to do is get that on high heat until it sort of boils up, and I want to just let the aromas infuse. Just all Use that, that word all again. That just come right up through your nose, and you've you had that a few times. Oh, you guys. Coriander goes straight in. Now you'll notice we've left a little bit of coriander. That comes in later. A little bit of a garnish, mate. I'm going uh -huh. all out tonight. I'm going a all garnish. out. Garnish. Yeah, that's and a bit another of, chef term. A bit of lime juice, mate. Another garnish. Yeah, if you want to jump into the old um, Michael one, mate. Yeah. I've got some fish in there, just in a plastic bag. I'm keeping it in big old chunks like that, and I'm suggesting you keep the fish quite big. Yep. I put them skin side down. Oh, okay. If you put it the other way down. Fish sometimes tends to curl okay, a little bit, yeah. but the skin side, it doesn't curl. Yeah. And at the same time, I want to get Kaido to come up if he's around. So I've got a big job for you, mate. Because big. I've run out of cook space. Right. I need to make some rice. Right. Can I be, can you to trust you with this? You can trust us. Right, so I'm also going to give you this as well, mate. I'm going to cut this for you. Get your, get your frying pan. Now this is the best way to make rice, I reckon, out in the bush. There's no doubt about it. The rice and the onion go in together. Yeah. Cook that for about three minutes. With no water. With no water, a bit of olive yeah. oil. The onion's gonna infuse with the... Do you want to help you? Oh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, I'm you, glad you you're doing it, you that. Got it, you got it. I got it, no, no, yeah. you got it, so you got it. Cook this, this together, olive then, oil, Then you water, double the amount of water for yep. the amount of rice you put in. You and can't go wrong. Last little bit of fish. Now, I'll turn that down to a bit of a simmer. And the whole idea is we're poaching the fish in the green curry. We're gonna let that cook on it on, on the one side for probably about 10 minutes or so, and then I'll flip it over, be very careful, and we'll keep that fillet really whole. And I've got a little bit of bok choy in there as well. We'll steam that. So we're basically looking at rice, bok choy, and a green Thai fish curry. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, especially when you're out camping. This is one of those meals, if you're ever in the game to try and impress someone, maybe you're doing a little bit of courting, you're like, you know what? I need to pull out the big game right now. This is your meal, so take notes. Oh my God, what the? Yeah. I'm glad you're doing this, because you're not qualified, eh? I burn hot water, so. <laughs> you're right. Oh, there you go. There's one cup We need done. to try and keep a little, how much do you need to put in? Uh, a cup per person, is it? Or two? One and a half. <laughs> We'll what are you doing, really man? Just put a heap in and see what happens. Thanks, mate. That'll work. Right, Just give it a little bit of a... Oh, you poor, poor boys. Well, that is smelling absolutely superb. I'm going to get the bok choy out. A fair bit of noise coming around from the boys cooking the rice. I think I'm going to just check and make sure everything's going all right. I'm going to bring a big spoon with me too. That is smelling good. That is all looking good. We need to make sure the rice is good, though. Boys, boys, boys. Hello, mate. Out of the way. No, no, What's look, going on here? Well, what is my going theory on here? is, because you said put some rice in the thing. How much rice? How much rice? Don't touch that's that? hot, mate. That's hot. So, how much rice you, you put said, in? Uh, put, I don't know how much you said, but we put in more than that. Because you used to go <laughs> for Graham, full. and he's not very big, and I'm here. So I figured I'll just eat the extra rice. Look how much is left. Oh, in that. don't. It's. That was two cups. We two took one cups. cup per person. Okay, but... no, not one That's cup per person. It's definitely not one cup per person. So just got to stir this. It needs water, I think. You'll need four cups of water. Yeah, that'd be right. You got water? 
No. Nah. Yep. <laughs> This is this this is where it all could fall apart. <laughs> this is yeah. you have so little faith. All right, here Walk we go. Walk up some water in that. You nearly put the fire out, mate. All right, you've always got that. Yeah, you've got that. You are right? Got you... Oh, good luck. Good luck. You seem stressed. What's wrong? <laughs> I'm a rice <laughs> king. We're out of gas. Well, turns out can't trust the boys to cook any rice. I'm gonna cook it here. Oh, I can do both. I can do both. I've sent the boys off to get some firewood because. They can't be trusted with the rice. I'm going to use a bok choy. I'm just going to put it straight in because you'd want to steam that normally. That smells pretty good. I can it smell does. from over there. I'm trying to steam the bok choy, Ooh. but I'm just going to put the lid on and let that steam over the top. you got the oh, head sorry, torch mate. right yeah, it's in my bright, eyes. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of which, so you sent me to get firewood. And Correct. How'd you go? Did you get some? Good. Real good. We got some firewood, but uh, Kaido was using your chainsaw and uh, the, the chain came off. And <laughs> it, like, I told him, I said, mate, watch it. The chain will come off. And, uh, oh, and I bet, I bet that's exactly how it happened. Yeah, and right? I said, "Careful, mate. Sean will be angry at you." <laughs> so, so anyway, like, let me trust with the rice. This you is how you gave me the So I'll give that back to you. I'll put that back. Do you want me back on the rice? <laughs> Look at that. Sorry, mate. Look at that. No, don't touch. Oh, don't touch. No. <laughs> Where's your beer, mate? Where's your beer? I need another one. Can I get another one? <laughs> <laughs> See, oh. Folks, if you're trying to cook this meal yourself, just honestly, if you've got if you've got some mates like Jocko, just try and maybe entertain them near the fire. Just sit around the fire and enjoy the night. <laughs> Me drive car. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, mate. mate. Good on you. Righto. I reckon we get some plates because it really isn't that far off. That oh, box really is going to take about okay. three or four minutes. Come on, let's a bit of rice first. Oh, that smells good. Cool. Yeah, that should be good. That should be good. I think it's about that's done. doing there, that yeah, rice is. here. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, yeah, Bok choy is making a bed on top of the rice. Piece of little, a little bit of fish there. A little bit of fish. Oh, really, that smells good. Look at that. Look at this. Hang on. A little bit more. Here we go. At a great height. Sprinkle a bit of that. Oh, yeah. Sprinkle a bit of that. Here we go. <laughs> We're on. <laughs> You're in a restaurant. Get a little bit of lime and be a nice little garnish on yeah. it. Yeah. Look at that. There you go. <laughs> a little bit of that. A little bit of that. You know who would love this? What? Graham. Graham would. And he doesn't get it. Mm. <laughs> that is absolutely beautiful. Mm. All right, boys, I reckon we go sit down near the fire. Sounds like a plan. I've got to rip into that. Yeah, that is That is fantastic. sensational. The fish is just falling apart. It's cooked. It's been poached in the curry. Flavours. Oh, Outstanding. Righto. Oh, that's mine. Yep. So, tell us, folks, which campsite would you rather be in? East or West? Let us know in the comments below. You know, it doesn't seem to matter where you go around Australia in the bush right now, you're bumping into other people's bloody rubbish. Four wheel drive tracks, campsites, they are littered with rubbish left behind by other people. Quite frankly, we've had a bloody gutful. So we've teamed up with Drifter to launch a new campaign called Respect the Bush. Now, with the help of a bunch of industry mates such as Fulcrum Suspensions and Spares Box, we're gonna get thousands of bags done up that can be shipped to your door free of charge. You're gonna get two for doing nothing except wanting to help out and keep these tracks and campsites open. And we're gonna use the two in, two out policy. Basically, you take both of your plastic bags out with you. You use one of those plastic bags to put all your rubbish in. And then of course, chuck it in your wheelie bag, take it out with you. But the second bag, use that to pick up rubbish you didn't create. Use that to try and clean up the campsite or along the tracks. And imagine if we all did that, if we all took two in, two out, full of rubbish, what a difference that would make. Now look, those bags aren't quite ready just yet, but what I'd really love for you to do is share this message with as many mates as you possibly can. Let's get the word out there, let's get this campaign started, and let's keep Australia's tracks and campsites open. It's a fine morning on the Coffs Coast. We've got a big day planned as we check out more of the tough tracks around the region. First though, Time to down a coffee or two and enjoy this awesome little camping spot. This one is hosted by Coffs Harbour Camping and Four Wheel Drive. Best of all, most of our favourite Coffs tracks are just in the hills around us and I can't wait to get into them. I reckon it's time we wake up Graham and make sure he's up and ready to show us more of the amazing WA coast. I'll just try one more time, I'm just rung out. No answer. Nah, sorry, Graham. He's probably already on the road. <laughs> sorry, mate. Forgot there's a two-hour time difference on the West Coast. 
Well, we're not going to win any bets on the best weekend away if we don't hit the road. So it's time to get packed up. Just about to go and hit the track. So I thought I'd uh, share with you three tips you can use to try and prepare yourself for a tough weekend away. Number one, make sure your vehicle's mechanically sound before you go off-road. Now that seems really simple, but just check for things like, you know, if you've got like a little bit of a bent steering arm, or you've maybe got a hub that's a bit clicky or a CV that's a little bit clicky, make sure you try and fix that sort of stuff before you come off-road because prevention is way better than trying to sort something out when you break it halfway up a really tough track in Coffs Harbour. Number two, make sure you've got some spare parts. Now, I know what's weak and vulnerable in this 80 series, so I carry the spare parts to suit. So I've got a couple of uh, front axles, a couple of CVs, and also some locking hubs. And um, that's probably enough spares for this vehicle. Um, sometimes I carry a spare alternator if I know I'm doing a lot of mud work. And number three is to regularly go around and have a look at your vehicle. So inspect the vehicle. Is there any oil leaks? Is there something new? Is there something broken? Open the bonnet after every single night at camp. In the morning, go through your vehicle and just have a once over. I did that this morning and noticed that the brake fluid is just a little bit low. I think I was on the brakes a fair bit yesterday. And um, as a result, I need to top up some brake fluid. But otherwise, the 80 is looking pretty good and ready for another day of tough tracks. Back in the west, the sun is rising on another perfect day. Oh, and you might have noticed the sun's also rising over the ocean. That's just another unique part about this coast. Ah, have a go at that. What an absolutely stunning morning it is. Sunrise coming up, the ocean's flat and calm. I slept like an absolute log last night. You know, when it comes to touring, this setup is just so good uh, for a number of reasons, but one that I really like Everything's got a home and it's super quick and simple to set up and then super quick and simple to put down again. There's nothing worse and trust me, I've done it. Then not knowing where things are, taking an hour, two hours to get set up when you get into camp, you know, an hour to set, it's, it's a painful exercise and it makes you not want to move around. It makes you not want to go touring. But when you've got a setup like this, everything's got a home. I know exactly where the burner is to bake a cup of coffee this morning, where toast is going to be made. It just makes life so much easier. So when you are shopping around, my tip, when you are shopping around for a touring setup, have a think about how long it's going to take to set that thing up. Sure, it might look good, but is it going to take you an hour just to find where you put the coffee beans? For me, no way. Straight away, I know the right here. That's what I look for in a touring setup, amongst other things. But right now, what I'm going to look for in a touring setup is a hot cup of coffee and I'll watch that sun come up. Hey, eh? How good is it? I hope the boys are having a fun day. Just you wait, mate. We've got some cracking tracks on the cars today. Just a stone's throw away in the state forest. Another day in Coffs Harbour, and this one's a new track. I've never done it before. It's a very famous track around here called the Army Track, and I'm um, supposed to be quite tough as well. Can't wait to see this one. I just know it goes straight up. Mate, this is the start of the track. I'm just looking, it's just shaly and steep, and something tells me we haven't even come to the main bit yet. Far out, I can see it from here. Holy dooly, that looks good. Nice and steep, mate. I hope you're ready, Jocko. You're ready, mate. Yeah, mate, I'm pretty keen to give it a go. If my memory serves correct, this track has a rock step that'll uh, make you a grown-up, mate. It's a, it's a good one. That's the thing about these Coffs Harbour tracks, mate. They're all quite similar in the sense that they scare the heck out of you. They're really steep and ultra-committing. 100%, and lots of fun, too. The Army track is really well known in Coffs Harbour. It's right up there. It's one of the harder tracks in the area. It's certainly not in the top five, but it definitely is a really tough bit of track. That felt good, guy. Eh? Oh, man, that was mad. And it's providing plenty of challenges for the boys as we head up towards the harder section of the climb. Nice and slow. Yep. In or in or in or in or. That's it. That's. What's wrong? This is a scary bit right here. A steep shoot into a massive off camber rock step that'll tip you into the bank if you get it wrong. I've seen a few people drive this before, and the secret is you just gotta to commit to it and just. Well, commit I can do. <laughs> Damage though, I'm a little bit worried about that. I've seen some glass from the lights down yep, there. Yep. You're gonna, the natural feeling for the, my vehicle anyway is gonna to wanna to sit into that bank mm -hmm. pretty hard and coming up here completely off camber. You don't wanna muck around. I, don't, I really don't know what's gonna happen here. I could, I could, I could drive it. 
or I could completely destroy one solid eagle. It's one of those, but flip a coin, I don't know. It's going to be spectacular either way, though. Big boy pants Feeling good, on. yep. Let's get into it, right? Righto. I can't I'll fight you. Off. Get, get off this rock step. Look at how steep it is. This does not look easy. So many big shaley rocks. step is looking enormous. This is going to be all kinds of wild. Whoa, what happened there? <laughs> you right? Am I on my side? Go, ahead, go down there and see if you can talk to him. I think I'm on my side. I think I'm resting against my roof or something. What happened mate? You lose drive or something? I don't know. No, no, I was driving. Got a winch, do you want to? I'm sort of in a silly situation at the moment. It feels like the vehicle's on its side. It's sitting on the scrub bar and probably that bank at the back. Oh no, it's clear. It's just a scrub bar at the front. Like your front left tire is a fair way in the air. Is it worth having another go, or is it point past that point? You might be able to back out of it if you want to, if you feel like it, but it'll probably feel a bit wild. Yeah, maybe just go for a winch, mate. Winch out. The funniest thing about this drive was as I was like airborne and sort of coming back, I could see Kaido's face. <laughs> it was, yeah, that wasn't worrying enough. Well, I'm feeling pretty lucky right now. Resting on the scrub bar is way better than being on my panels. Kaido is using one of Drifter's soft shackles for the anchor point, and soon the boys have got me safely hooked up. Tell you what, kind of getting used to insane angles on this trip, but still, feels good to level things out for a bit. Touch your right end now, just a little bit. Front's up. You're up, hold well on. Okay, time for the top section of the climb, and hopefully this one goes a little bit better. That was uh, interesting. I think he's drove most of that hill on three wheels. Cool, mate. Almost had it, hey. Almost had it, yeah. and um, almost ruined the seats as well. Like, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, there's a lot of almost happening. That funky you know? smell from the 80 <laughs> and you as well, mate. But... Oh, well, how's Kaido feeling? He should not go after me. That's a bad move. But because... props to him, though. IFS, the only IFS vehicle here, and he's driving it like a boss. He's gonna, he's gonna struggle here with clearance. Yep. And maybe not having that front locker. Yeah. Um, but he's giving it a go. I, if I was him, I would have turned around about then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hundred percent, <laughs> especially after seeing your spectacular performance, mate. All right, let's pull him up, mate. Yeah, sounds let's, good. Let's see what you can do. This is a pretty wild track to take a rear locked IFS truck up, but Kaido's taking his time and filling out the line. This is insane. One go? Yep. Yep. That's it. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Loves it. Holy. Do you want to have another go or what do you want to do? I'll oh, just try and do it slow. I don't think you can, mate. I think you've got to keep steady momentum, but give it a go anyway. Righto. Be careful. Oi! Oh, there's a mirror. Ah, oh, maybe. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, mate. You want to have a winch? I can run the winch, eh? Righto. Great call. The old mirror fell off. That's what happens when Toyotas come to a <laughs> tough bit of track. They sometimes just start shedding parts. You gotta pay to play. Yeah, it's, it's the offering to the track. Well, that was definitely a moment, and I reckon there was no way we're getting the Lux over without risking damage or a roll. So, winch it is. How good are soft shackles? I've been using the old metal shackles for pretty much the last 15 years, and after just seeing how safe this recovery gear is, I don't think I'll ever use metal shackles again. At the end of the day, if you can do anything to make the recovery process just that little bit safer, well then I'm all ears. With everything hooked up, Kaido winches safely over the rock step and out of trouble. Yeah! Hold well on, mate. Far oh, out. Nice winch, how'd that feel? Insane. That's the go. That's it, you know what? 
Into it, into it. Into That's it. That's the guy. Into it. Well done. Yeah! yeah he's stoked. He's stoked. Stoked! What sort of body part are you going to break? Oh. You're going to do a mirror, flare. Yeah, look. Look, a door hasn't been done today. True, I might do a door. We'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe a seat or undies, one of them. But uh, we'll give Get it a go. Get mate. Oh, this is so much steeper in the car. Gotta commit, I reckon. Oh. Mate, that rig is an absolute animal. What is it gonna to take to actually challenge it, eh? Well, mate, no doubt about it. Jocko's like obviously seen my line, then your line. Learned a fair bit from that, and that's why that's we put him. We put him at the end on purpose, just so he can learn from our mistakes. He's a very nervous driver. Not doesn't have the confidence off road, and um, obviously the vehicle's not very capable. So we're doing a bit of a favour, mate. I reckon we go and uh, show him what's up on the next bit of track, eh? Right. Well, there you go. That was Army Trail. Really not one for the faint-hearted and certainly one to bring all the recovery gear on. Still, definitely a lot of fun, well, once you cleaned your seats off. With that track done, it's time to take a second and see what damage has been done. Well, I don't make them tough anymore, that's for sure. When you come to Coffs Harbour, you really have to pay to play. Some tough tracks, they're very demanding, and um, look, if you're going to commit to lines, you've got to expect a little bit of damage. Mate, you gotta. Oh, you fixed it, did you? Oh no, no. Oh well, really. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> didn't come off, yeah. <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. It's yeah, that's clean. just about done, mate. You could uh, probably go for a set of cleavies now. Yeah, a little bit wider ones would be nice, but yeah, should have folded in before we went up. But yeah, it's just. It happens, can't mate. Bang. It does yeah, happen. Right. It does happen. Look, it still looks good, mate. You haven't done any panels, which is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, all straight, so. So looking, sweet. looking good. Let's see, Jocko. Any damage, mate? I think I'm actually okay. Obviously, there was a the... scratches. Yeah, don't worry about that. But um, I thought I might have hit this guard when I was up on that angle, but. It's seems, pretty sweet. Seems yeah. pretty good. I actually painted in that Raptor coating Raptor stuff coating. before I came here, and okay. they're working pretty well. Yeah, it's nice and tough, this stuff. Did yeah. you just use a spray can? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a spray can and gave it a bit of a clean up. Mate, it was... and it actually looks half ah, reasonably done as well. Yeah, it's almost like I didn't do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon, graham has got any damage or? Probably not. I reckon he's probably sitting on a nice beach somewhere. and Probably got some sand inside his swag or yeah, something, something like, that. like that. You know, a little bit of sand flew into his coffee latte. Yeah, righto, Sean. Hey, mate. I reckon you should concentrate on keeping that 80 of yours on its wheels, bud. Right now, I've broken camp and I'm heading north a couple of hours because I want to show you folks a unique bit of kit. We're talking Big Red. Yeah, that's right, the Simpson Desert Sand Dune right on the edge of the coast. This is something you've got to see to believe. This is one of the few places where the desert literally meets the sea. These rust red sand dunes make a striking contrast against the white sand of the beach, and then of course, that blue ocean. We've got a big storm coming in today too, so it is so atmospheric up here. But how'd you be? A big red sand dune right on the beach. Something else, I tell you what. So my question to you folks at home, has this wet your appetite? Is this the sort of location that you could spend a few days exploring? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Alright, time for our next track, and I can tell you now, there's going to be wheels in the air again for sure, as we head to the dump track. Jocko, this is the track isn't it mate, this one here on the left? Yeah, from memory it's just a little bit of a creek run that turns into that real steep exit at the end, remember that? Mate, I couldn't forget that, I tried to do it the Dirty 30 years ago and made it just to the top and then rolled all the way back down. Fortunately, now you're coming back with a little bit more power and a little less driving skill, so you'll probably be okay. Oh, I dare say, mate. Look at it. Look at this scenery. Rainforest flexing up through a creek run. This is a pretty cool track, man. And that must be the pinch to get up out of here. Oh, yeah. That looks slippery. Here at Four Wheel Drive 24-7, we use a simple system to grade how slippery a climb is. And that's to use our crash test photographer Shuey as a bit of a guide. Oh, oh, He's an expert at judging steepness all around the country. And judging by this, oh, I reckon he ranks this one as pretty darn slippery. You ready? First or second gear? Second. Reverse. First? Second. Second. Come on, mate. Give it a. I'll go first. First gear. Oh. 
We'll go a second. <laughs> this wasn't quite enough. For All right, so that was a practice run. Oh, yeah. I need a bit more run up. You've really got to commit to this one, turns out. <laughs> Straight up and over. <laughs> You've got to commit. I think you had two wheels in the air just then. That's all time, all time steep. It just, you get steep, but then it, it's vertical for that last little pinch. Oh. Your turn, mate. <laughs> How do I follow that up? Lots of right foot. <laughs> Good advice, mate. I feel like the front's gonna jump up and then come down and shock load and... Just back off when you get to the top then. Nah. Whoa! Maybe a bit more of a run up. Nah, I backed off at the start. Yeah. You gotta watch that shock load, because once the the vehicle gets a bit of air up here, comes down, grips, that's when CVs break. But hopefully you can back off just at the right moment, but still have enough momentum to get over the top. Oh, a bit more of a run up, man. Yeah. Come to your front, no, nah, come back a bit more. Right, eh? what about that? Yeah, I'll go from there. That's it. You've done it. <laughs> Third final charm. You've given that a red hot go. That's a perfect amount of momentum, so you don't end up going airborne too much. Jocko, he's going to have to get into it. He likes to drive nice and slow. This is not his style of driving, but he's got no choice but to give it everything. It doesn't have everything to give. It's got like four kilowatts. <laughs> we'll use all four, mate. Righto. All right, show us what the Luxie can do, mate. From there, Jock. Righto. Light it up. Put your lockers on. Did you air down? Should I try to crawl it? <laughs> if you crawl it, I'm never talking to you again. Okay. <laughs> Wait, is that a, is that a like, I don't be it. I will never talk to you again. <laughs> All right, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> nice go, mate. I thought for a second he was going to try and crawl there, but no, he's just lining up. Righto. Oh, it oh, he's oh, no. it! Oh, no! Oh, I'm pushing back a bit. <laughs> you right? Yeah. It's going to be difficult from there, mate. It's going to be very difficult from there. Unlucky. Nah. Get the winch out. Get the winch, get the full recovery team out. Call Graham, call Graham. <laughs> nah, get back you go, mate. It's not for everyone, this hill. That's a shame. I thought he had it. Cordo, you've been following us like the last couple of days now, mate, and I finally thought his driving was at a level of confidence he'd be able to follow wherever he went. Just ran out of skill the last minute there. Nah, not quite, mate. You've got to get the rear over as well, not just the front is the key. Whoa. Whoa, slippery. <laughs> that felt wild. That's better, mate. I backed off too early, I think. Helps me, don't stall it. Well done. Second time of charm. Just hate feeding it. It's a crawler. That's good. We both took two goes at it, so very similar setup vehicles, you know, at the end of the day. Quality of driving. You're both right up there. You've done well. <laughs> Well, it's been a heck of a weekend away for us on both sides of the country. And I hope we've given you some inspiration during what's been a pretty difficult year for all of us. For now, it's time to head to our final destinations of the trip, finding our spots to check out this country's amazing coastline. Well, boys, scale out of one to 10, how much fun did you guys have in Coffs? Mate, absolute ball. I love tough tracks, and if you're into tough four-wheel driving, Coffs Harbour is the place to come, I reckon. It really is. It's some of the... It's literally the scariest tracks I've ever seen in the country. Living Coffs Harbour. Oh, exactly right. And look, 
before. I was sort of, she was a brand new truck before this one. <laughs> I reckon I, I wheeled it within an inch of its life over this weekend. And that's what it's all about. Kaido, you wheeled that high lux like an absolute boss, mate. Did you have a, bit, have a ball? I had a ball, mate. The tracks up here are awesome. You, mate, you did really well on the wheel behind that thing. Couple of high luxes and a real cruiser out for a weekend away driving tough tracks, mate. And it really poses the question, what do you prefer the most? Like the tough tracks like we did or the touring tracks like Graham did. He also had an absolute blast, mate. Yeah, he did. He we did. heard from him a few times over this weekend. He's doing what he loves best, yep. touring trips. And now that's what is so good about four-wheel driving. You can pick tough tracks or touring or even a combination of both. Let us know in the comments below what you prefer and why. And speaking of Graham, let's hear from the bloke himself. Have a look at that view, will you? Well, Shauno, yes, mate, I have had an absolute blast over here in the west. This stretch of coast blows my mind. I absolutely love it, and I'm stoked that we've been able to share a bit of a trip on either side of the country together in these strange times. Mate, I've still got a few days up here. I'm gonna keep plodding around, maybe catch a fish or two. Looking forward to catching up with you, mate, for beers in the shed. For now, let's see if I can't catch a fish. Well, guys, thanks for watching our latest adventure, Tough Tracks versus Touring, I'll tell you what, mate, there is no clear winner because as long as you're out in your four drive having a bit absolutely. of fun, you're absolutely winning the game of life, mate. And um, if you have liked this video, and chances are you did because you're still watching right now, make sure you like and subscribe to the best YouTube channel in the world, Four Drive 24 7. Mate, you'll see us out here again? Yep, absolutely. You might see us on a couple of these tough tracks. I reckon so, but you'll definitely find us down at the pub. See you next time at Four Drive 24 7. Cheers. Stick around folks, because coming up is all the fun of the four-wheel drive 24-7 outtakes. But first, check out the gear we use to make this trip possible. Now as a part of the show, we want to run through some of the products that really helped us through this tough weekend away. And I want to start with the Mike Coleman fridge, mate. It's a brand new fridge in the back of Sooty here, and I've got to say, it's an absolute cracker. Now you can tell that this fridge has been designed by people who actually go out in the bush and go camping. There's so many clever features on that fridge, from a bottle opener, from you know, a power pack, a lithium power pack, that if your fridge for some reason, you, maybe your 12 volt system blows a fuse or whatever, you could use that um, 12 volt little pack, the lithium pack to run that fridge for a whole weekend. It's just clever little ideas like that, that just make that fridge so good. And it's a tough, well-built fridge, mate. And um, most importantly, beers have been absolutely icy cold. That's through, my favorite part that, as that's well, That's the biggest yeah. test of a fridge, mate. And um, it ticked all the boxes for me. 100%, yeah, and speaking of new things, I just put on the Terralume 20 inch light bars, a double rope light bar. I prefer running light bars on the front of the vehicle, just a little bit more airflow. I need all the horsepower I can get these days. Yep. It's super bright and it's low profile as well, so I'm really stoked with it because you went spotties as well. Yeah, you? look, I've, I've got the two nine inch uh, Terralume icons in the front. They are super bright and I've actually got the same light bar oh, up, yeah, up cool. on the roof yep. as well, mate. The combination of those two, like, to be honest with you, you could probably just get away with the spotties at that bright. Yeah. But yeah. you know, you combine it with that, you just get to see everything. Yeah, it's which, real nice. Which yeah. is fantastic. Mate, speaking of ultra reliable, my red arc system yeah. in the back of Sooty, mate. I've had that in Sooty. It was probably one of the first mods I did was a 12 volt setup and it has never let me down. And I've, I've I attribute that because I'm just running really good quality gear. I've got the manager 30 in there, so it basically pumps 30 amps worth of power into those batteries, keeps them topped up. So it doesn't matter if I'm at idle, mate, or driving up a rock step on army track or getting winched up army track, there is always 30 amps going in to charge those batteries at the back there. And it's three charges in one. That's what I really like about it. So it's also a solar regulator. Yeah. And I, when I get home, I can actually plug it into 240 mains and um, just keep everything tip top condition, mate. And you get a good 12 volt system in the back of your four wheel drive. It just makes it so much nicer for camping, mate. You just don't have to think about it. And yeah. that's what I reckon is the mark of a good 12 volt system. You know, plug and play. You know your beer's gonna be cold. It's a good weekend away. Definitely, definitely. One aspect of a big trip on the road is getting grubby. I tell you what, I've been salty, I've been sandy, I've been wet from the ocean, and I haven't had time to even consider getting cleaned up before jumping back in the D-Max and making a mile. And I haven't had to worry about it. You see the Razorback seat covers in there mean that the seats, the interior of the D-Max is absolutely spot on, they're perfect. Seat covers are a must if you care about the resale value or heck, just the condition of your four wheel drive. The old Razorbacks in there, well, I'll tell you what, I put them to the test and they come up trumps every time. Well, mate, there's a couple of good quality bits of gear that Definitely. have kept us going on our trips. Now, a little bit of an announcement as well. We've got a brand new Facebook page. Four Wheel Drive 24-7's Facebook page is in full swing. And I'll tell you what, it's a place to be, mate. There's heaps of really cool content. There's competitions. We've been giving away a stack of prizes. So if you're not part of the Facebook page, do yourself a favor, take the 30 seconds, Subscribe to our Facebook page, mate, and um, make sure you don't miss a second of the action. Now, what do we got coming up next, mate? Mate, we've got my favorite part, and I think your favorite part too, the bloopers. The bloopers. I yeah. reckon he's going to star in those, without a doubt. Probably. <laughs>
but rice is on the go now. I'm just gonna flip the fish over and um, now it's time to put the bok choy in. Sorry, sorry, sorry I came in yeah. way too early. <laughs> I was like, are you talking about firewood? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At one of the hardest tracks, but I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, not do that again. Yeah. For a couple of the products that made this trip possible. <laughs> what does that work? <laughs> Right. <laughs> we're gonna have to put up with you. We're good. Graham, where are you, mate? I like when you're here. Actually. Stay there. Turns out, turns out you're a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, mate, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> oh. no. Why does this always happen? Oh, we haven't even got to the first track yet. <laughs> it's gonna be a big weekend. It just kept going. I was like, when's it gonna stop? Oh, even my voice has gone up an octave. I can't. Oh, oh, watch out, mate. Look at that. A boiling bit of rice in my eye. <laughs> 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 We're going to cross Harbour. Not going to look at him. Not going not gonna to look at him. <laughs> Go up, Joe. Hang on. I can't get out of the way. <laughs> You do. Yeah. How much water did you put in again? Was it four cups? Yeah. Roughly? <laughs> Roughly. <laughs> these. So Sean's about to do this little pinch here. <laughs> well, now's the top of the show. We want to run through some of the products that got us through that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, a it's hot! <laughs> you let me know when you're ready, mate. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs>